Good morning. Our greeting to all our parishioners and to all those who may be visiting is taken from our mission statement. Our Eucharistic community at Holy Cross welcomes all to faith in Jesus Christ. We celebrate today the feast of the dedication of the Lateran Basilica, which is the Pope's Cathedral in Rome, and our Mother Church. As we celebrate the presence of Christ in our midst, let us ask that we may become more perfectly what we are, his living temple. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Wieland. As we get ready to, I mean, as we get ready for our Eucharistic, Eucharistic celebration, we ask that you silence all cell phones and take a quiet moment or two to prepare our hearts to hear God's word and to, to participate in the offering of this Mass. Please join us in our, in our entrance hymn, hymn number 662, Christ is made the sure foundation. Good morning. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves today as we celebrate the feast of one of the great churches of Rome, that we may be mindful that the church is not just buildings, but the church is made up of living human beings and that we are blessed to be called part of that church. Lord Jesus, you came into the world to show us the love of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you suffered and died that we might have new life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to be your people, and you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting.
O you from living stone, living and chosen stones, prepared an eternal dwelling for your majesty. Increase in your church the spirit of grace you have bestowed, so that by growth your faithful people may build up the heavenly Jerusalem. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We now call forward the kindergartners through fifth graders for the special liturgy of the word. Our first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east. For the facade of the temple was toward the east. The water flowed down from the southern side of the temple, south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around to the outer gate facing the east. Where I saw water trickling from the southern side, he said to me, This water flows into the eastern district down a pound Araba and empties into the sea the salt waters which it makes fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of creature that can multiply shall live, and there shall be abundant fish. For wherever this water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit, for they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. Waters of the river, gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. The waters of the river, gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in distress. Therefore we fear not, though the earth be shaken, and mountains plunge into the depths of the sea. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. There is a stream whose runlets gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst, it shall not be disturbed. 
God will help it at the break of dawn. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. The Lord of hosts is with us, our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come, behold the deeds of the Lord, the astounding things he has wrought on earth. The waters of the river gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. Our second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, you are God's building. According to the grace of God given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation, and another is building upon it. But each one must be careful how he builds upon it, for no one can lay a foundation other than the one that is there, namely, Jesus Christ. Do you not know that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person, for the temple of God, which you are, is holy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I have chosen and consecrated this house, says the Lord, that my name may be there forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. With A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and the oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recall the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us 
for doing this. Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, the disciples remembered that he had said this and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. This weekend, we are celebrating a very important event, and that is the Cathedral of the World. This is what St. John Lateran in the city of Rome is called. It's the Pope's own basilica, and it reminds you and me that the building has endured earthquakes and fires. And each time that they did this, what they rebuilt it, but they did it with a great deal of care. And we need to realize that it is Jesus who is at the center of everything, and it is he who is the model of our church. We should also remind ourselves that the Catholic Church is the new Jerusalem. In the letter to the Corinthians today, Paul refers to the church as the house of God. And because he does this, we need to realize that our focus has to be on the Lord. And this is a very important thing to realize. After all, he is the head of the church. And we should also remind ourselves that he is the center of everything. And as we see here, you can see directly the house of God, the tabernacle, where our Lord resides and waits for us. What we should also remind ourselves is that whenever we get together, he is ready and willing to give us grace. He calls upon you and me to be a living stone. And this means that you and I should be going out preaching the gospel. After all, each one of us here is a priest. And even this includes all the women as well. We need to realize that we should be offering this sacrifice with Father Wheeland and giving it to God the Father. We should also realize that the Lord is asking that you and I live the gospel, not just once in a while, but every minute of every day of our life. And this is something that you and I are asked to do. We should remind ourselves that we should be living the good news. We should be the walking, talking stones of the church. And as Paul reminds us, each one of us is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Today we see the Lord going into the temple of Jerusalem and he's angry because these people are making his place a marketplace. They're selling it. They're carrying on as if this building didn't belong to anybody. It belongs to Almighty God. The same thing as our churches do. They belong to Almighty God. And there's a certain demeanor that you and I need to observe therein. We should remind ourselves, this is God's house. We're celebrating the Eucharist, and it reminds us that you and I have to seek the favor of the Lord. We should also keep reminding and focusing on us that it's okay to be exhilarated, excited about the Lord. 
And this is something that you and I should be doing. When we come up to receive the Lord, are you praying quietly to our Lord? When you go back after having received the body or the blood, are you celebrating an act of adoration, an act of contrition for your sins? Are you celebrating thanksgiving? Are you asking the Lord for everything that you want? And those are all the things that you and I can do. After all, the Lord wants you and me to be happy. And we certainly have great reason for being happy because the Lord is with one with us and we are one with each other. So the unity is the result of our Lord living his life and coming into this world so that you and I would be able to live his life. Let us stand and let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten that made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Let us realize that we are part of the church. We are the church. We are the living stones that God has called to be part of his church and to bring that church to the world. Help us to be faithful to our call always. We pray for the church that our hearts may be dwelling place of God in our lives. Show forth God's love and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that our daily living may transform our world into a place of love, justice, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for blessings upon Michael Merritt, and all seminarians, that they may persevere in this study and by God's grace come to the altar of the Lord as priests, and that more young men and women will have the courage to follow a call from God to serve in the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that as we celebrate Veterans Day this week, we remember all those who gave their lives, that we might live in freedom. For our men and women, who are today in the service of our nation and for the veterans in hospitals across our land that they know of our love and gratitude. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that each member of our parish community may realize their call to 
Stewardship and generosity work together through sharing time, talent, and treasure. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that the sick and suffering may be helped by people with caring hands and loving hearts, and that all who have died may rejoice forever in the presence of God, especially Virginia Sweetie, Sweeney, Stephen Bach, Ronald Hatch, Walter or is a housekey? Hey, sorry if I murdered that last name. And for Amy Marsh, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment and make our own private petitions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we are called in baptism to be your people, to be your church. Not only do we have to be your people in church, but that we have to take the church, you, out into the world. Help us always to be mindful of that. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The second collection today is for capital improvement and debt reduction. Please join in the offertory hymn, hymn number 741, God is here as we, his people.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Accept, we pray, O Lord, the offerings made here, and grant that by those who, that by it those who seek your favor may receive in this place the power of the sacraments and the answer to their prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in your benevolence you are pleased to dwell in this house of prayer in order to perfect in us, to perfect us as the temple of your Holy Spirit, support by perpetual health, the grace and resplendence of your glory, that we may be acceptable to you. You are, you, year by year, you sanctify the church, the bride of Christ, foreshadowing invisible buildings, so that the rejoicing as mother of countless children, she may be given her place in your heavenly glory. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once again, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and res res resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvador, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I leave you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Are there any Eucharistic ministers bringing communion to the sick? I'm sure many of you at this point are saying, not another speaker after communion. I promise I'll be brief. Uh, Because we're nearing the end of Vocation Awareness Week, I just wanted to spend a couple minutes talking about the importance of vocations. Now you're probably thinking, what is a vocation? Well, a vocation, simply speaking, is any call from God to a particular way of life. And each and every one of us has a vocation because we're all children of God and thus we are all called by God to a certain way of life. And this goes beyond just simply our job, our occupation, what we do for a living, even though that is part of it. For example, many of you here have been called to the vocation of marriage and family life, which is an extremely important and very beautiful, wonderful vocation. God also calls people to serve him in his church as priests and religious. I'm sure many of you are aware that there has been a bit of a shortage of priests and vowed religious in recent years. And this is not because God is simply calling fewer people to the priesthood or to the religious life, but it's because those who are being called, for whatever reason, are not able to answer that call. Now, in order for us to know to which vocation God is calling us, we have to be in relationship with him. And that relationship begins first and foremost in prayer. As someone who is in the process of discerning my vocation, I would ask each and every one of you to continue to pray for vocations. And in particular, pray for those who are called by God to have the courage to answer that call and to have trust in him, just as our Blessed Mother had trust in the Lord when she said to him, Be it done to me according to thy word. And there are, besides prayer, there are other ways you can support vocations as well. One way is through the Catholic Ministries Appeal. Some of the money in the CMA goes toward financially helping out myself and other seminarians. As I always joke with people, I am a poor seminarian, but with your help in the CMA, I won't be quite as poor. Because we're not able to have jobs while we're at the seminary, the money that we receive from the CMA enables us to support ourselves while we're at school, as well as to support us financially in terms of paying for our seminary education. Along with the financial support in the CMA, in the CMA our parish will soon be starting another program in support of vocations. And this program would be called the Traveling Chalice. In this program, we'll have a sheet in which people can sign up and we'll be able to take home a chalice that we use just like the one that we use at Mass, the priests use at Mass. Being taking home this chalice will be another opportunity to continue to pray for vocations. More information about this can be found in the insert in the bulletin. And we're hoping to begin this program at the beginning of Advent. And just on a personal note, I want to thank each and every one of you for your continued support of vocations, and in particular, supporting me in my vocation over the last couple months since I've been here at Holy Cross. I would urge all of you to continue to build your own relationship with God so that you too might know to which vocation God is calling you. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Michael, and we want to thank the bishop for assigning Michael for this year at Holy Cross. It will be a great addition to our parish. Let us pray. O oh God, who chose to foreshadow us in us the heavenly Jerusalem, through the sign of your church on earth, grant, we pray, that by our partaking of this sacrament, we may be made the temples of your grace and may enter the dwelling place of your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have just a few announcements this morning. Paid orders for holiday pies will be taken this weekend and next. These pies, pie sales help support the Grease Church's Habitat Project. There will be two very wonderful celebrations of the Eucharist next weekend here at Holy Cross. On Saturday morning at 9.30, we will offer the Mass of Remembrance for all of our loved ones who have gone home to the Lord. On next Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m., we will honor Blessed Grimwald with a special liturgy. Creating a Safe Environment training will be held this Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in the Parish Center. This training is needed for all our CYO volunteers. All are welcome. Please see the bulletin of how to register. The 18th annual scavenger hunt for Holy Cross teens and tweens is this Friday, November 14th. Please see bulletin for permission slips. Mass that evening at 520, not 5 p.m., as listed in this week at a glance. This hunt will benefit our food covered which is in need of our donations also, especially for our holiday baskets coming up. There will be no parking in the area between the rectory and the playground from Monday, 7 a.m. to Saturday, 6 p.m., from now until Christmas or whenever the rectory roof construction is completed. We need your help and support in reaching our CMA goal. Please remember to fill out and return your pledge card as soon as possible. Remember, you have until May 2015 to pay your pledge. There will be a coffee hour after Mass in the Parish Center. A recessional hymn is hymn number 685, Moved by the Gospel, Let Us Move. Please see our bulletin or website at holycrossrochester.org for these and all parish details, and be sure to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. I want to remind you and ask you and beg you to get your CMA pledge cards in. Now, you're going to give or you're not going to give. So if you're going to give, get your card in so that Father can have less agita in his life. So, <laughs> The Lord be with you. Be May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass ascended. Go in peace to love and serve.